Join us as we discuss Resident Evil 5 on the next episode of the Time Hop Podcast. Gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Time Hop Podcast. I'm your host, David Lozada. I'm joined with Tim Ronan. Hello. In case you don't know, the Time Hop Podcast is a podcast that plays games of the past to let you know if they're worth playing today. Today's episode is all about Resident Evil 5, which originally released for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 on March 5th. 2009 which means it's celebrating its 10th anniversary this month but before we get into resident evil 5 tim how have you been doing how was your week not too bad not too bad uh, i forgot uh pax is didn't that like just started today didn't it yeah it started today yeah i totally forgot about that but that's cool mm-hmm. um excited for uh things that have come out of that kind of that so far but we'll be talking about that in a second That's yeah news, but, uh... <laughs> yeah uh, i usually have gone to pax i've gone the past two years this year i decided not to go um i don't really know i, I don't know i don't know i i just felt like i didn't really <laughs> want to go this year it was kind of had a lot of things to do and 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 um, I'll be going to Boston again anyway in, in April, so it's just a lot of yeah. back and forth, you know. Um, but PAX is it's it's fun. Uh, it's a it's a fun. I've never, event. I've never actually. Well, I've never been to like the like main PAX. I've been to PAX Unplugged actually, oh. which is um, it's a like a board game, yeah, type thing. And I, I actually went the first year they started it back, uh, in uh, 20, 2017. 2017, so, yeah. So pretty new. Yeah. Um, is that one in DC? That was in, uh, Philadelphia. Ah, uh, Philadelphia. Okay. I knew yeah. it was it was south of of New York. I I just I I, I don't know. I didn't know if it were. DC or a little more above. Um, yeah, I've never been to the one, and I believe it's in uh, Seattle, right? PAX West, I guess it's called now. PAX West. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because now they have a PAX West, a PAX East, and a PAX South. PAX South. And yeah. a PAX Australia. Oh, and PAX Australia, too. They don't have one for Europe, do they? Yeah, I guess not. I think Europe is only Gamescom, right? Uh, they have some other things. I think. Well, they have EGX. Um, EGX, yeah. Like the English stuff. Um, yeah. And there might be something else, but yeah, definitely EGX is one of them. Yeah, I, I know they have um like UK gaming conventions and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, Europe is surprisingly kind of bare when it comes to gaming conventions for some reason because it you know when they when they when they release a lot of like um uh like sales numbers for games and stuff usually the first one that you see is you know the uk sales charts and that's really indicative of you know the american sales charts even worldwide and stuff like that and then you know in japan obviously they have they have expos there too but but it, Europe is noticeably absent. Hmm, strange, but we'll, we'll probably, you know, we'll probably uh, grow a little more, I think. Oh, Paris Games Week. Completely forgot about that. Paris Games Week. That one, that one. I don't think I've heard of that one. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty big uh, a couple years ago, two or three years ago. I think Sony had a really big presence there, um, actually. 
I don't <laughs> I don't think last year they had one, but but it, it's it's I think it's September or October. Um and then they then they usually had Sony usually had another convention in um in uh, Santa Monica, I think, or San Jose in California. But everything is in California, you know. They got E3, they got the Anime Expo, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, we don't all live in California. We don't we don't all have that luxury. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I don't really want to live there, I don't think. Nah, me neither. It's not my type of thing. Yeah. I like water. They don't have water over there. <laughs> it's, it's you know, it's sometimes um, I went to uh, a press event last year for Ubisoft uh, in California. And uh, I, I never forget, like, going to hotels and, and seeing, like, little plaques um, above the sinks that, that would say, you know, please uh, news water sparingly because we don't have a lot here and not everybody knows right. about this yeah. um and then another thing is they actually charge for for bags which sucks <laughs> but uh you know it's something that you that it would take me a lot of time to get used to you know because i i, I like to just bag everything um but uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah they they actually charge over there so Anyway, let's move on to our favorite news stories of the week. Before we go back to the past, let's explore the present. Tim, what's your news story for the week? Right. Well, uh, like I said, PAX is going on. Started uh, just today, day one. And we got some news from uh, Gearbox that uh, Borderlands 3 is now officially a thing. Uh, we had, there was some, there have already been some teasers and stuff that have been floating around. And then I think it was yesterday they dropped like, uh, like a really big teaser for whatever was going to happen today. Yeah. But um, now that they have fish, they have officially announced that it's definitely a thing. It's definitely coming. And that's pretty cool. It's pretty I cool. think so. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, they also announced some, uh, I guess they're doing a remaster of the first one. I think it's a remaster yeah. of some kind. And they're adding some like quality of life features such as, um, they're normally like, you have to like, you normally have to open the map like manually to like look where you're going, but. And then they're adding like a mini map off in the corner, like like it was in the second game. Um, there's also going to be four player <clears throat> four player co-op for that as well. Um, and some other things, but yeah, mm. exciting news. Yeah, we gotta we gotta whenever Borderlands celebrates its anniversary, we gotta do that one. Uh, we gotta like do a up. A play session that one like all of us together because the Borderlands series is just really a lot of fun um, with mm -hmm. with friends. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think today they they really uh, announced a lot of stuff for the Borderlands franchise in general. Aside from you know Borderlands three and and the four um, K, I think it's a four K remaster um, for like upscaled for PS four Pro and. Uh, uh, Xbox One X, I think, right? For the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm actually not sure about that, but I think that is the case. The, on top of that stuff I just mentioned, they're also doing, like, um, enhanced graphics for uh, B Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel oh, as well. That's probably what I'm getting mixed up. That's that's the handsome or they, collection. I don't know. Right? They, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, they might be doing that with the first one, but I don't remember that right now. Right. Yeah, I probably got that mixed up. 
Uh, yeah, so they're doing a lot of stuff there. And I think they announced the board game too, right? Yeah, that too. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, I think, I think it's, I guess it's their, like the company in general's 20th anniversary. Wow. Gearbox software. I didn't, I didn't know that. Didn't realize, but. Hmm. Yeah, so tons of stuff. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, and they also announced a Duke Nukem, like a Bullet Storm meets Duke Nukem kind of scenario there, right? I think it was uh, in, the yeah. same, in the same kind the of. Switch. Oh, right, yeah. Um, I, I don't know the, exam, the n- exact name of it. I think it's like Bullet Storm. Something about Nukem, uh, in in the subtitle, and uh, yeah, uh, I I'm from what I read, it's basically the same Bulletstorm game, just uh, somehow incorporating Duke Nukem features or Duke Nukem makes an appearance or something. I, I didn't read too much about that. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. I haven't played either of those games, so yeah, me neither. I know nothing about them. <laughs> I actually own Bulletstorm, uh, and I've yeah. never played it. <laughs> you know, like, it's just something that... I don't know. It's never been something that I've been dying to play, you know? It's just... What, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so it's called uh, Bulletstorm Duke of Switch. Edition. Duke of Switch. Yeah. Okay. That's... Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've, they've, they've been really dormant. I think, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think they've done anything really too noteworthy this console generation, right? I mean, they've they've remastered, uh, they they introduced the Handsome Collection, right, on on uh, PS4 yeah. and, and Xbox One, and then they mm-hmm. remastered Bulletstorm, and that's it, right? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, and it's been what? When did these the when did these consoles come out? Like 2013? 2014? Uh yeah, t- uh, end of uh like fall 2013. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's been 6 6 years now almost. You know, and they they need to make money somehow. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um so it, very interesting to see that I, I want to really see the story of why it took them so long to kind of make this announcement because we all knew it was coming. I mean, it, it was kind of obvious, but uh, it, I wonder what happened during development because I know they announced they didn't really announce Borderlands Three, but they were like they made it very obvious, you know, and uh, and this was a while ago. This was years ago, and then. People just kind of were like assuming that it was going to come out, but it never did. And I'm I'm really wondering what the story is here. I, it would probably come out in in, in interviews and, and so on and so forth. But I'm I'm really wondering what happened during development that they that they chose to you know um, wait it out and, and and just kind of release this deluge of, of information all at once and, and PAX East 2019. Um, the other thing, um, I don't know, maybe it was just their preference. I mean, you, I guess they could have done it over time or kind of save it all for one thing, which is what they did, more or less. Yeah, yeah, it could, it could be. You, you know, you're right. It could just be a, a business move, move that they were uh, banking on. So. I don't I don't know, but I'm just interested in finding out. Uh, and the other thing I'm interested in finding out is where Borderlands Three is going to land because they didn't announce any platforms for it, from my understanding. Yeah, I was watching a live stream of it from someone, and they were kind of wondering where that was going to fall because I think I think if I'm right, uh, Borderlands uses the Unreal Engine. I think Unreal Four, so, right? Yeah. So obviously, you know, as of late, with all these exclusives being 
announced and then you have this big <clears throat> this big game that people have been expecting mm -hmm. and it uses that engine you know that does leave some people wondering if this is going to be another one of those things and epic game that's important store. to a lot of people yeah i don't I, yeah that's but it's really interesting and then the other thing really what i was indicating um i didn't really think about the the pc exclusive debate but um really what i was indicating was the console because they didn't announce release date they didn't announce a platform so maybe this is the next generation um game it's possible mm. i i don't know it's possible. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know. I mean, yeah. I feel like. I mean, I obviously don't really know a whole ton about the next generation, but I feel like at the very least, it would have to come out on the current gen. Yeah. And then, if they were going to do next gen, they would have that as well. I as feel like, given given Gearbox's kind of mo. And, and given like their their I don't know their business practice not that they're like a they have like shitty business practices or anything but they like to really capitalize on cross um, uh, on, on releasing things on a lot of platforms as many pl platforms as they can I mean look at Borderlands 2 it's on like Vita it's on like you know these other devices I think even like they, they, they do a lot of different stuff you know there so um, and I think they have Borderlands VR. I think you could play Borderlands Two in VR. So, yep. um, they, you know, there's like, they, they, you know, they, they like to experiment and stuff, and they like to, for lack of a better explanation, they like to really maximize <laughs> their 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 investments. So it wouldn't surprise me if you're right, Tim, like that they release this, um, maybe like end of this year or or sometime spring 2020. And then, uh, oh, lo and behold, Sony announces the PS5, and it's due out in, in fall 2020, <laughs> you know? And the same thing with Microsoft. They announce Xbox, you know, 1.2 or Xbox 2, and it's due out fall 2020. That really would not surprise me. But um, And then, you know, they'll release Borderlands 3 again for those platforms. Uh, but, you know, if you have a PC, that's also another thing to... to, to uh, you know, wait and see because that it's so interesting. You know, uh, now like the PC landscape itself, it's so divided. You know, um, you have the Epic Game Store, you have Steam, you have uh, GOG, you have uh, uh, EA Access. Is is it called EA Access? What is EA? Right? Origin. Origin. Access. Shit. Yeah. Origin Access. Uh, EA, Ac EA Access what? is um, EA Access is the one on on Xbox One, um, yeah, and then you have the Ubisoft store, so it's the Ubisoft whatever their thing you play I think it's called, yeah. So it's like you have all this different stuff. Oh man, it's it's going to be so interesting, so interesting going going forward. Uh, it's particularly with this game, in my opinion, uh, to see where it does land. Um, but speaking of multiple platforms, um, I actually thought what, one of my new, uh, favorite news stories this past week was, uh, and this is a recurring story, uh, a recurring rumor, I should say, is that Sony Interactive Entertainment has, um, gone public again with, I mean, they always go public because that's just the nature of the beast, um, with a backwards compatibility patent. Um, uh, I, I believe this was posted on the U, the official U.S. patent uh, website, uh, which everything there is open to the public, so anybody could really go in and search for anything. Um, and it's it was specifically filed from uh, uh, Mark Cerny, who was the guy who was responsible for building the um, infrastructure, the, the architecture of the PS4. Um, and it, he did this in 2017. So this uh, new CPU, CPU supposedly, uh, will feature select features. Uh, the description reads, 
Selected features of the new CPU that are not present on the legacy CPU will be compatible with the new CPU. So, uh, basically what this means is that, um, the, well, what this means from the get-go is the PS5 will be able to play PS4 games, okay? That's, at this point, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, but what the really interesting aspect here, and I think this is a technical, if they manage to pull this off, it would be like a techno technological marvel, um, is the PS5 being able to play every PlayStation game ever made. That would be super interesting. Like, uh, even like I'm talking like PSX games, PX, the, the, the original PlayStation games, like, you know, uh, Jet Moto and, and Croc and like all of these, like, you know, Parappa the Rapper and, and, and stuff like that. That would be amazing. Tim, what what is your opinion on, on uh, what, what Sony's trying to do here, supposedly? I mean, definitely different and cool because we don't really have other stuff like that, I guess. Um, I don't have any PlayStations, so my own like personal investment in that isn't maybe as high as others, but that would be cool. So it's possible. Let me ask you this, since you come from the perspective of not ever owning a PlayStation, would the like when PS5 is announced and it's like you can play like any PlayStation game ever, would that like entice you more to play to purchase the thing outright? Or will you just be like, Oh, that's cool, but you'll still like not play it? You'll still not buy it. I don't know if it would necessarily make me want to get it um and i mean in the case of a lot of games i'm sure i could get it elsewhere unless it was like an exclusive um yeah playstation um especially at this point with certain games that maybe have had time to get a port yeah um even a pc or something Final Fantasy comes to mind immediately. Like, all of those games that were once just on PlayStation are, like, on PC now. So. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that then, yeah. Mm. I don't know. I feel like, you know, because you come from, uh, assumedly, a, a PC, you know, the PC space most exclusively, um, uh, that you... That this like, this is something that would try to attract you to to go to their platform because, um, this is like a direct response to the PC landscape, you know, because Steam has so much on there. I mean, now they even have, they they will have almost all the Halo games, you know. So it's like this is something that's like, listen, you know, we know that, uh. The PC space that you have, you have access to so many games on on Steam, but guess what? You don't have access to these PlayStation classics, and now you could actually go and, and, and play whatever PlayStation exclusive games that you want to. And this is all the way back to like, um, what what are some good PlayStation exclusives back in back in the day? Um, I think Jet Moto and like I like I mentioned before, um, like Virtual Fighter and. Uh, and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure if we're sure. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with <laughs> with these games, uh, like Chrono Cross or something like that. Um, you know, these games that that you could only find on PlayStation, and 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 I don't even think they're in, on PC. So, um, you know, I, I think that's a direct answer to that. And and I, I think people who only even only you know played uh, games from PlayStation Three on, like they or even PlayStation 4, I think this would entice them, you know, to, to to buy a PS5 because, I mean, when Microsoft, they made that announcement for uh, for Xbox One I think a couple years ago, two or three years ago, that was, that was big. <laughs> that was a big, you know, uh, kind of response to Sony who was like, ah, oh, you could just get it on PS Now and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, nah, 
Microsoft was like, nah, no, no, no. Just get the disc and put it in the Xbox One and it works, which was amazing. <laughs> um, so I, I'm interested. I, you know, I'm, I'm a big Sony fan, so um, I've owned almost every PlayStation console since, uh, since the original. Actually, I have owned every PlayStation, except for like a, the PlayStation VR. But I don't, that's not really a console; it's more peripheral. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm interested to see what happens. Um, I hope it's true. And personally, I think you know this isn't the fanboy in me speaking, but I, I think that's a really impressive feat if they manage to do that. Like from a Fanboy wars aside, me being you know an enthusiast, a PlayStation enthusiast, that putting that all that aside, like I think that'd be a pretty, you know, neat accomplishment, for, just from a technological perspective. That that's awesome. Uh, but we'll have to see. We're looking forward to to hearing more about that. Yeah. Actually, uh, were you? Was that like your final thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to quickly mention that um, I guess uh, Elder Scrolls Morrowind is free right now for oh. PC. PSA, go um, go get that that Morrowind. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wasn't it only? <laughs> think, yeah, sorry. I think it's no, it's fine. I think it's like the twenty fifth anniversary of Elder Scrolls or something. So they were doing like Bethesda was doing like this. They were gonna have it be free the the day of, um, but then they extended it through the weekend. So oh, it's free until Sunday. So go grab, it. Cool. grab it. You better go. Yeah, I've, ne- go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never played it, but supposedly it's pretty good. I think so. Uh, yeah. A lot of people look fondly to that one. Um, Morrowind was the one before Oblivion, right? Yeah. 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 I actually have that too, but I've like barely touched it. But I really should like actually play it at some point. Because it's, again, supposed to be pretty good. People love Oblivion. Like, that's like every elder scrolls nerd is like oh yeah oblivion's the best one skyrim's like and i'm like okay <laughs> I, st- I still haven't played it you know <laughs> like i'm like okay whatever you say i don't really don't really care <laughs> but um uh they also talk about morrowind and and i don't even know the other two that that were released before it um I, I, uh i think the second one was Daggerfell. I don't know. And man. then the first one was, I think it was just called Arena. Actually, not sure on that one, but I have no idea. But the fact of the matter is, is that I I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll explore this topic whenever we do a, an anniversary uh, podcast on. Whenever we do an episode on on the other scrolls on and any one of those games, but like I just I have no <laughs> I have no like uh, uh, intention of like exploring that you know it, it has to go back with with what I said last week with with um, with EverQuest. It's like I don't have the time to put into those games. Those are like huge time sinks. Like I I, I don't know. That's that's just being an adult, dude. Like <laughs> I can't do yes. it anymore. <laughs> let's move on to the topic of the show this week as i mentioned late earlier we're talking about resident evil 5 which originally released on march 5th 2009 for playstation 3 and xbox 360 uh, the game was obviously developed and published by Capcom. It is the seventh major game in the Resident Evil uh, franchise. And it was announced in 2005, and it was met with a lot of controversy, uh, namely because the protagonist, Chris Redfield, 
was in Africa, and he was killing a bunch of black zombies. So you could see uh, why that controversy was a bit understandable. Uh, so it, the plot of it revolves, it's a bit more, I think, in my perspective, it's a bit more uh, worldly, I suppose, um, than Resident Evil 4, which was just Leon in a, in a remote Spanish village in the middle of nowhere. Um, this one's much more about of a of a investigating a a terrorist threat that that kind of threatens the entire world uh, by the newly established bioterrorism bioterrorism security assessment alliance, uh, and Chris Redfield is joined by Sheva Alamore, who's a new character in this region called the Kijuju, I believe it's that's the way it's pronounced. Um, and basically what happens in, 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 over the course of the game, no spoilers, is that some of Chris's older, uh, enemies, let's say, like a Albert Wesker, he come back to kind of haunt him and, uh, the kind of, the, the plot kind of revolves around that, you know, you see Jill Valentine pop up, stuff like that. And this was really the game that kind of, uh, veered the franchise into a uh, more action-oriented uh, route. It, it, you know, Resident Evil Four. I, in my opinion, Resident Evil Four kind of started that. But this was very much. It was very more, much more apparent in Resident Evil Five, just because uh, really there weren't a lot of horror elements in it. It was much more about the action. Um, but despite that, this was the best-selling. I, I believe it still is the best-selling Resident Evil entry ever released. So, uh, it, you know, Capcom yeah. definitely knew what they were doing. Uh, but That's before I go on and on... Uh, yeah, I know, especially with Resident Evil 7, uh, you know, that that really, that really got astounding reviews. And um, but Well, it seems like... Um, like, back in the day, I got... Uh, Nintendo Power magazines, and they just they kept bringing up Resident Evil Four all the time. Yeah, seems like I guess it seemed like people really loved it. I didn't realize them. What do you mean? I, don't know, I guess maybe. Well, just that people really enjoyed it and loved it. So I guess I I figured it was among the top if not like the most like yeah. cherished of all of them yeah i mean you see so when i say it's the best selling resin resin that resident evil 5 is the best selling entry in the franchise i i'm really for from the data that's indicated here in front of me um this is in reference to just the base game so just the game that that you know, not the gold edition, not the re-release on play- PlayStation Four, Xbox One. You know, I think Resident Evil Four would would easily beat Resident Evil Five if if you considered all the you know the release on Wii. It, you know, it's released on PS Four, on on Xbox One, etc., etc., etc. I think that 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 would definitely eclipse Resident Evil Five. And don't forget, Resident Evil Four only released, I believe. On GameCube at first, right? Yeah, it originally released on the game. I'm looking at this right now. It originally released in the GameCube on 2005, and it was exclusive to the GameCube until I think about a year later, and then it went to PlayStation 2. Because from what I remember, and this is really, you know, forgive me, listeners, if I'm wrong here, but this is really kind of digging into the <laughs> into my memory, but. Uh, Nintendo had a deal with Capcom uh, that they would come up with a series of Resident Evil games that would be exclusive to the to the GameCube. Um, and when Resident Evil Four came out, and it was getting like all these reviews, like these positive reviews, like "Oh my God, like this is amazing!" Blah blah. blah. The Capcom was like, "Yeah, fuck this," <laughs> and they were, and they basically scrapped the contract with Nintendo. They basically betrayed them. And they were like, "We're going to release this. It's going to be multi-platform." And then a year later, it was on it was on PlayStation Two. But yeah, so let's jump into Resident Evil Five. Uh, what do you think of the game's presentation, Tim? How does that hold up today? Um, 
let's see. This was this was released in two thousand nine. Two thousand nine, yeah. Yeah, two thousand nine. Um, actually, did, there was a remaster of this, wasn't there? Or was there not? They were so uh, a gold edition came out a year later, and then there was another. There was like another edition that came out for PS4 and, and Xbox One. Okay. Because I think I was trying to find like video footage of, of it, but I kind of wanted to, um, I guess look at the original, and not look at the remaster. I think I, I think I was looking at the original, mm-hmm. but do you remember, do you know when like the newer versions came out? Like what years they were released? So uh, the ones for PlayStation Four and Xbox One came out June twenty sixteen um okay okay then yeah i was looking at the original okay um i mean seemed uh, from a totally superficial standpoint uh they looked pretty good pretty decent um yeah and maybe more or less the same as four i guess no i I mean i I think there was when I was playing this game on. Um, uh, I I got this game, you know. Don't hate me, Resident Evil fans, but like I got this game not too long after it released, and it was like, I was like, holy shit! Like it, the to me, the visuals of this game were amazing, especially after Resident Evil Four, which was like, it was very drab, you know. Resident Evil Four, amazing game. I love Resident Evil Four. Don't don't get me wrong. But, like, a lot of the environments were, like, just brown. Just, you know, gray and brown and... I kind of get, like, whenever I think of it... Whenever I think of that game, I just think of, like, dark. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, is that accurate? Yes, it is. I mean, seriously, like... You know, maybe people today, they, they dif- disagree. But I encourage you, go back to Resident Evil 4... A lot of it, it's just dark and gray, and there's not a lot of color in that game. Seriously, and everything, a lot of the the, the enemies and stuff are just ugly. Like, which thinks well, ugly. I mean, you know, they're like zombies and stuff. <laughs> they are zombies. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I give them the benefit of the doubt there, but like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> I okay, you know, I want but... my zombies to be beautiful. <laughs> What the heck? I do. <laughs> but, I mean, when you look at, like, you know, Resident Evil 5 zombies, like, they're all so ugly. <laughs> but, but, like, they're, they've got more, like... Uh... They're ugly in a beautiful way. <laughs> Lovably ugly. <laughs> exactly. But they've got more detail to them is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, they're, they're not, okay. like, just ambling around, like, you know, like, these are more, like animated these are these, these like yell at you and they scream and i, I don't know these, yeah you, you, I, it's hard I, to I explain that. yeah is that is that um is that like specific to this game or or i mean I, in other resident evil games i know that or at least i think that the zombies are like more traditionally like bleh and they kind of they're like stupid but these ones seemed like smarter yeah like is that like a story thing like yeah so like, pretty exclusively to five or something yeah so without spoiling too much about the plot it's basically this it's not the same virus that happened at raccoon city but it's like a variation of it like an enhanced variation of it so okay. yeah. like a new strain like a new strain exactly or whatever yeah. mm-hmm. i think it's called the progenitor virus um yeah it's it's basically like a a a better strain of it yeah i mean in in terms of presentation i I thought it was a it was a a pretty drastic not not like whoa like it blew me away but it, it, it was it was one of those games where it definitely um it was very because at the time it was just 2009 you got to put yourself in that perspective so playstation 3 was only around for 
three years, I want to say, or right? How long was the PlayStation 3 around by then? I have no idea. It, it, it must have been two or three years. And, uh, you know, they weren't a lot of really good-looking games. But, I mean, there was GTA 4, but, like, that wasn't really good-looking. It was kind of ugly. And this was one of those first games that was like, okay, this is really cool, you know? Like, this is really immersive. This is really... I feel like I'm in Africa, and I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, in this environment killing zombies, and it was a tense situation. So I think they do well there. Um, and some of the um, actual zombies themselves, they look really cool. Like, you know, uh, if you're a fan of Resident Evil, you you probably know this, but um, some of them, they look more like... Um, for lack of a, of, a, of a better description, like fleshy, like like they're they they're sort they're soaked in blood. They're they're a lot more uh, visceral, I suppose. Images, um, they look like uh, like viscera, you know, like they look like like things that have been torn out and 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 walking around. Do you do you see what I'm getting at, Tim? Mm. Not really. Not sure. <laughs> I'm probably explaining this really bad, but. Uh, uh, they really look like like dead things, you know. That have there have been things that have been ripped out of them, and um, it really okay. nails this kind of impression. Yeah, lots of tentacles. Yeah, and things like bursting heads. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. they like that thing. Yeah, yeah, they like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of good, uh, bloody, gory stuff, uh, and and. I'm 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 really into that. Anyway, uh, what do you think of Resident Evil Five's gameplay? Um, there, I I liked the whole. I mean, I think I'm a sucker for like collectibles, and this has that. Um, I think it, you can correct me, but I think the main ones are like, there's treasures you can find, and you can sell those for money, and then there's like symbols, uh, yeah. BS double a symbols you can find and you can use those to get special things was there anything else or are those like the two main ones uh, that's it those are the two ones yeah okay yeah i i mean i i like i tend to like completing stuff and finding secret things so that appeals to me and yeah. i like how they also have a bit of function as well because you can, you can actually use them uh for stuff so there's like incentive to go and explore and see like you know what's off in the distance maybe you'll find a symbol and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and then even <clears throat> sorry losing my voice it's okay um i know that with one of the bosses you can like kill it a certain way and that'll get you i think it's the first boss like the tentacle thing in the fireplace like uh, yeah yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever that is, like the blast furnace fireplace. Um, you can use like fire to kill it, but if you do it that way, you don't get the treasure. But if you do it like a different, I think more difficult way, you do get the treasure. So there's like a little sense of like experimentation and mm -hmm. exploring things and trying different things and, um, maybe even like a, a little bit of replayability there. So that's, that's cool and different. Um, and there's also a little bit of like character progression, I guess, because you can upgrade your guns and stuff. Yeah. Another thing that I appreciate. You, I don't think you could do that in the, in the last one. Could you? Resident Evil 4? No. I, I don't think you could do it in Resident Evil 5 either. Um... No, you could. You can? Really? At least from the video I saw. Yeah, you can, like, oh, you upgrade can put... your guns. Yeah, 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 I remember, okay. Yeah, you could put different yeah. things on it. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. Like, in improving the reload speed and... Yeah, uh, I, I remember. think ammo capacity as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Resident Evil 4, I don't think it, w um, it was in that one. I think it was just the guns themselves. I don't yeah. remember. I don't remember exactly, but... yeah just kind of i mean it's hard to tell without playing myself but it looked like moving around could sometimes be a little annoying or like 
slowish. Yeah. Yeah, that, that so that's one of my biggest complaints I think with the game, especially when you're playing um I believe it was the the time attack mode, the um or the mercenaries mode um where you have to you basically have to like uh uh get to like kill a lot of zombies within a within a time limit and you have to like hit the um the uh the time oh shoot what are they called they're basically these time symbols that are scattered around the stage and you hit them to get more you know bonus time um and then within that time limit you have to kill as many zombies as you can and get a high score um, but the, the biggest frustration in, in, in that mode is that, you know, you can't really, the, the, the controls of the game are stiff. So you basically, you run, you know, and then you stand and then you shoot and then you run and you stand in what, in place, you don't move and then you shoot, you yeah. know, and that's annoying. It takes a lot of time to get used to that. And Resident Evil 4 did the same exact thing and they didn't really do much to remedy that and. Resident Evil 6 does the same exact thing, <laughs> you know? So, like, um, this is something that is just part of the Resident Evil franchise. Like, even... It's better than the tank controls. Believe me, it's better than the tank controls of, like, the earlier games. But, like, it's still, like... They haven't really found a good formula there. Um, it's not like, you know, I, I just did a piece on the Earth Defense Force games. And... You, the, the, those games are they are what they are but like you no one could say that those games don't feel uh fluid they don't feel like it's fast and you could shoot things and blow them up right away i can't say the same thing about resident evil you know like it's very much uh when you're shooting it feels stationary it doesn't feel right especially when all these zombies are coming after you you know <laughs> and, and you have like a rocket launcher on 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 your person and you're like <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you like you 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 have like you just want to fire it and just run you know it's not it doesn't work that way in resident evil you have to like just walk sprint slightly sprint you know you you don't even run fast in this game um and then shoot and then you know wait for the damage to just kind of accumulate i don't know that's the biggest that's my biggest draw with the gameplay outside of that I mean, it's the, your fairly standard third-person shooter affair. Not really too much, um, too much that's innovative there. Uh, it's it's accessible if you're if you've played a third-person shooter game, you've, you're probably used to playing this. Um, and yeah, you know, you run up, uh, no jumping, <laughs> no jumping mechanics. You know, you have to press A to to jump. Um, to, to climb stuff or climb letters and stuff like that so yeah nothing too special there yeah i think <clears throat> i think i read that at least um some people felt like it kind of departed a little bit from like like it became more like a shooter i guess yeah. rather than like a survival horror mm-hmm I agree. I agree and disagree in the sense that um, I agree that it, it is a big. De it, it's very obvious that it's a big departure from the survivor horror drama, but I don't think that it's as it's a departure because of the gameplay per se, so much as the level design. Because you know, as I mentioned before, Resident Evil Five is set in Africa, and, and in Africa you have like these open world environments. You have like there are very in Resident Evil 4 you had it was like a dense forest they were these dense Spanish forests and like these very really small villages and 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 these like you were in a castle and in 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 a dark dungeon and stuff like that and, and it was scary you know it was genuinely scary but it was the same basic mechanics you just point and shoot you know and it's the same thing in Resident Evil 5 the the difference here is not the gameplay per se Although you do have more access to more, you know, explosives, more stuff and in, in, in more stuff like that in Resident Evil 5. But the difference here, in my opinion, is just the environment. It's just, you know, as much as I hate on Resident Evil 4 for being so dre, so for being so gray and, and drabby, like, um, its environments are scary. They're, they're genuinely horror filled. And when you go to Resident Evil 5, you can't really say that. You know, uh, 
it's not really it doesn't feel like it's really like it's a life or death situation it feels like you can get out of it alive somehow you just climb the fence <laughs> and you'll be okay you know and, and and you know you have a valley to run away and so um again like I, I agree with that but i don't agree with that it's because of the mechanics i i think it's really the level design that's that's um uh the reason why there's a disparity there um mm -hmm. in terms of sound design i'll get this right off the bat. i've played this game two or three times um I'll get this out right of the way. There's there's really nothing compelling about the level design in this game. <laughs> really nothing. <laughs> uh, Tim, did you find something that that you thought was memorable? It's hard when watching a playthrough sometimes. Yeah. Because then um, people are talking over. But I feel like all I really remember is like squishy tentacle sounds. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's coming through loud and clear for some reason, but yeah, I don't know. I guess nothing in particular. The um, <laughs> the thing that that comes up when you when you say squishy tentacle sounds, it, that 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 thing that you were talking, I think it's called the the Euro Euroboros. Um, yeah, that that yeah, tentacle think, yeah, thing that in right. in the laboratory that was like you have to defeat, you have to use fire to defeat it. I think it's like the chapter seven or chapter eight boss boss um, oh it was in the first chapter as well oh yeah there's a smaller one yeah yeah, yeah. i'm thinking about that was the, a smaller one yeah there's, there's a smaller one and a bigger one um the the one i'm thinking about is like in chapter seven or eight and you have to use fire to, to defeat it too and it's like it, like when you get the shotgun and you try to defeat it with the shotgun for the first time it's like it's these very like <laughs> like like blood splattering sounds and it's satisfying but it's like <laughs> you know it's it's really the only thing that's very apparent about the sound design in the game everything else is just generic i, I don't know so kind of going back to what you were saying it doesn't really set the tone or mood like say resident evil 4 did you think yeah i mean in the sense that like there wasn't a lot that they could do here and maybe this is this is a direct impact from the from the level design you know because i feel like the music in part goes hand in hand with what you're exploring with what you're interacting with on screen right and um i feel like there are some moments that they try to evoke that that feeling or like there are some moments where it's there are no there's no music you know and it's just it's it's silent, but it doesn't feel scary. It still doesn't feel like like it like it's 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 horror tinge. It's, it's just kind of like okay you know it, it's silent now, <laughs> it's quiet now. There's probably a boss around the corner or something or some kind of enemy across uh, around the around the corner. It, there's really nothing there that that uh, scared me. Whereas in Resident Evil Four. You know, when you're out, like, in the lake, for instance, that's what comes to mind. And it's, like, it's completely silent. You're, like, fuck. Like, I'm alone in a lake, and there's something... There's something here. I know for sure that there's something here. And then you see, like, the water move, and you see, like, the 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 the, the soundtrack start to pick up a little bit. And you're, like, fuck, 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 fuck. And then you're, you're, you're like, trying to swim back ashore... And this thing is following you, and the music picks up, and it's like really tense and stuff like that. There are no moments like that in this game, none. So, uh, yeah, it, it it it's a little disappointing in that in that regard, uh, from from an audio perspective. So, what did you think of? What do you think of its appeal? Do you think it's worth playing? Are you interested in playing it uh, right now, today? Yeah, you know, I kind of recently i've been wanting i mean i mean i guess this is slightly unrelated but i have been wanting to um play the fourth one because i had played it like many years ago probably before i uh should have been since i was of a young age but <laughs> i mean kind of wanted to, wanting to try it again um but 
Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this this does appeal to me in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably would try it if I got the chance. Yeah, I I I mean, I dec I definitely recommend trying out Resident Evil Four first, and then and then trying this game because you'll you'll notice for sure. Maybe I'm not being very eloquent, and I apologize to whoever's listening um, to to this episode. But there's something there that you'll definitely notice, and it, it might be the gameplay, it might be you know the actual level design or the whole premise of being set in Africa. But uh, you, you'll definitely notice the 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 difference between the two, especially when you have the controller in your hand. It might not be as apparent, uh, maybe in your watching a playthrough. Um, as for me, what I think, is it worth playing in 2019? You know, to, to Capcom's credit, they, they do a good job of, of porting their games and, and updating their games for current generation consoles. Um, and as I just recommended to Tim, like, if you've never played a Resident Evil game before and you're kind of, you know, you just got off a of Resident Evil uh, 2 remake and you're, you're in, in the mood for more, more games in that nature... In the franchise, uh, I'd say definitely pick out both this and try out this and Resident Evil 4 and, and try out Resident Evil 4 first. Um, because they're, these are in the same vein as Resident Evil 2 Remake. Resident Evil 2 Remake is definitely a lot scarier, but <laughs> it's the best game in the franchise in my opinion. But uh, uh, they're in the same vein, and, and you you wouldn't notice. It's not as apparent as you know going back and playing the original uh three games for playstation you know or uh or or like code veronica or something like that um these the resident evil 4 5 and and uh and resident evil 2 remake and resident evil 6 but i'd never recommend anybody to re play resident evil 6 don't play that are definitely those three games are definitely in the same uh tier so so try out those three actually i think resident evil 4 is coming to switch there you go so that's a perfect reason, you know, to, to play the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll probably pick that up at some point. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. So that about wraps up our thoughts on Resident Evil 5. Thanks for joining us for this topic of the show. Next week, we're going to talk about The Chronicles of Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena. A bit different. Maybe people won't necessarily remember this game, but this is actually one of the best licensed games ever made. Uh, this was before... It, it's very hard to remember a time before Batman Arkham Asylum. But believe it or not, before Batman Arkham Asylum arrived on the scene, licensed games had a really bad reputation. And this was one of those games, those licensed games, that was actually really good. So we're going to play that and see if it's worth playing today. And if we, recall, if we, if we were able to recall beautiful memories of, of Riddick and, and Vin Diesel... So join us for that topic of the show next week. So let's move on to what we're playing next week. Tim, what are you going to be playing next week? Probably some more Dead Rising 2. Yeah. Um, I, really, I really should try Morrowind mm. now that I have it. So I might do that. Actually, I there's some exciting developments with my Pokemon life. Oh. Because now I... So I only have... The, the most recent game I have is 5th Gen. Mm -hmm. But and that, that was... I, I, it's so crazy to me that that, that that came out like seven years ago now. I know, Black right? and white. <laughs> but uh, despite that, I have every single Pokemon but one at this point, Whoa. at least up until the fifth gen. And I'm just, I'm just missing Selby at this point. So. Whoa. I can give you yeah. Selby. I don't care. <laughs> no, I can. I, I appreciate that. Um, but I guess if you get the virtual console 3DS version, of Pokemon Crystal, you can uh, get Selby in that and then trade it into a current uh, later version 
oh. of uh, Pokemon. So, which I'm thankful for because normally you need like a special event for that. Yeah, Celebi is one of those uh, those special ones like uh, Jirachi and uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, Deoxys. Deoxys. Uh, Shaman, right? Shaman. Dark Rye. Dark Rye, yeah. Stuff like that, yeah. 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 It's always kind of. I mean, I, I guess I get it, but. I'd, I'd much rather just be able to get it without having to wait. But that's, the problem is that they do these events, but you never know when they're going to be. Yeah. You can, you can easily miss them, mm-hmm. and then they don't do them for a while. And it's like, ugh, just. I know. Something, do it. <laughs> But that's the beauty in it, I, I guess. I mean, they, they, they do it for a reason, right? Like, it's just, like, they, to keep you kind of anxious for the next event, to keep you kind of engaged in the community and stuff like that. Yeah, so. I guess. The other thing is that a lot of, well, I think these days, most of the time, they just give it to you. It, 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 like, they used to, like, <laughs> give you... They used to give you the item to access the location they were at, and then you had to battle it. And then catch it. Yeah. But nowadays you just get it. And it's like, I, I don't want to just get it. I want to. You want to battle it. Yeah. I want to fight it. Like, with um. <laughs> are you familiar with Arceus? Yeah, Arceus. Or Arceus. Yeah. yeah. There is an event where you would get like a flute, and you'd play it, and then you go to like this location where it was. But that was like, I think that event never made it. To the U.S., oh, so you know, other people got to actually battle the actual literal god of Pokemon, but I just, you know, they just gave it to the rest of us, and I don't know, I, I wanna, I wanna fight it. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember as a kid, it used to be like a, it used to be an ordeal, you know, like, like, you know, going to the. I remember, like an emerald, like going to the the tower where Rayquaza was, and like, yeah, you know, fighting him and stuff. And, and like, the thing about it was, it wasn't really about the fight itself. It was really like just getting there, you know, like, because I remember that 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 tower was a bitch, like, because you would fall, right? You would fall like five levels down, and you have to do the whole thing all over. Again. Yeah, it was such. You'd a use bitch. your bike to like navigate it. It was yeah. honestly. Like, the tower itself wasn't... There were, like, I think only four or five floors, but you'd oh. spend a long time trying to... Never mind. <laughs> just you have, you have to, like, very quickly turn your bike yeah. at certain points, like, with, like, super pinpoint accuracy. Mm-hmm. And it was going so fast that it was it could be hard to do that. But You remember this a lot more vividly than I do. But, yeah. Well, I, I have done it somewhat recently as well oh okay That's also why i remember yeah yeah i i just remember as a kid that that was such a pain in the ass and i was like i just fuck <laughs> you know and like but like it's you're true it's you're exactly right you know it, it, it's true that nowadays it's like it's so easy like i remember they did what was it two years ago that they or last year that every month they just gave you a legendary pokemon all you had to do was just go to gamestop pick up the card and then put it in and boom, you got it, you know? It yeah, like, I I think I know what you're talking about. I, yeah. I think I thought that was... Uh, was that for the main games? I thought that was like a Pokemon Go thing or something. No, that was for the main games. That was for Black and White... Uh, Sun and Moon. They gave you like legendaries, right? But yeah. Like, like every, every, every now and then? All those like free... All those like really hard to, to get legendaries, like the ones that we saw that we mentioned before they gave out like one of each of them every month for for sun and moon i remember oh wow that. yeah these kids today i know and and, and then in, when i what really got me almost mad was, was when i was playing omega ruby i think it was and at, like halfway through the game not even halfway like you get to a part where you encounter a, a latios or a latios and or whatever however you pronounce it, i don't know um and instead of battling the, the the thing the he just like goes into your pokeball and that's it it's like what <laughs> nice i was like are you serious yeah. and i remember in emerald like in in the original 
or ruby and sapphire and, and emerald like you had to freaking chase those you had to chase those damn things, and then they leave like they just like they just <laughs> flee yeah it was like what they're the like every generation since like two had like those running ones yeah we're gonna like locate them yeah in two it was um well the original was moltres and 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 zapdos and and articuno right well they they were just in one place they didn't run around oh. the game world so they started it with uh yeah two with entei raikou and suikun there you go that's what i'm thinking about gotcha but i think in in the remakes in the um Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you could get Ar um, Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos in that free in that roaming scenario. It's the same yeah. deal, I think. With, yeah, uh, I think you're right about that. With Ante yeah. and with Ente and all that other stuff. Um, right. Yeah, it's just it was like when that happened to me in in Omega Ruby, I was like, you can't be you can't be serious. I was like, it, this is for real. It was, it was such a disappointment. <laughs> but yeah. whatever. Whatever. The yeah. only the only like legendary that really felt like I don't know. It even felt like moderately challenging was was Groudon in the end. But even then it was like I I mm. caught him with like I think a regular Pokéball. It wasn't even that big of a deal, you know. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, they, I don't know. They may have changed that kind of stuff to make it easier. I actually, starting a number of years ago, I have, I self-imposed that I only use Pokeballs on everything. Oh. To make it more challenging. Or Luxury Balls. I actually have upgraded to Luxury Balls because that's like flashy and classy. <laughs> so I use Pokeballs if I don't have Luxury Balls. But if I have Luxury Balls, that's all I use. Mm -hmm. Right. Style points. That's right. Stockpile my master balls, like a, like a rich person. <laughs> you should use like. Did you ever use those um, those like cheats like the, uh, what are they? What were they called? Damn the game sharks. There you go. Did you ever use like the game sharks to get, like a hundred? I never balls? did. Really? I, no. Hmm. I mean, I I never would either because. That I don't like cheating. Oh, I but see. that's I, just me. I made the mistake of uh, of like getting a hundred rare candies, no, a thousand rare candies, and then like leveling up oh, one yeah. of my Pokemon just with rare candies, and that was I was right. That was terrible. <laughs> that was a really bad move on my part. I think it was my um, my swallow, my right Taylo evolved into swallow, right? Swallow. 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 Um, Swallow. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, and and it was a really terrible move. I, I remember like fighting against my friends in the uh, in the tree houses or the clubhouses or whatever they were called. And I always get wiped secret out. Secret bases. The secret bases. There you go. Yeah. Well, I believe if you do that, you actually get less stack gains yeah exactly yeah so yeah you like miss out on just getting more straight up just you get less stat points i think yeah. that way mm -hmm. if i'm yeah. if i'm correct it's very artificial it's only like maybe two stats per per uh attribution so and and you obviously you go level up it, it's it's super artificial it's not really uh for show I, it's it's purely just for show. It's not really for uh, for competitive uh, play. Uh, anyway, what I'll be playing this upcoming week. Um, recently, I've been reminded <laughs> that I have a PlayStation Plus account, and every month they give you uh, they give subscribers um, free games. And last month they gave out two games: uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two, the remastered one and uh the witness oh wow yeah and i've been thinking about playing the remastered call of duty uh call of duty 4 modern wars modern warfare i think yeah that's what they didn't do modern warfare the second one yet 
I think it, that's a rumor. Anyway, I'm thinking about doing that, that remastered um, game because, I don't know, I, I really liked Call of Duty 4 when it came out way back when. I mean, many people regard it as like the be- as the best COD, right? Yeah. COD 4? Yeah, I, I think so. That one in Modern Warfare 2, the, the sequel to that one. And World of War. World of War is good. But those three, like, those three games are so good. Like, the that that time span that infinity ward and um uh who's the other developer sledgehammer treyarch, treyarch there you go those or... three yeah it's, it's sledgehammer came on later on um like those that that time span like the, the original black ops call of duty modern warfare um war that war and then modern warfare 2 that was like for me like the best Anyway, that about wraps up our show for this week. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm your host, Dave Lozada. You can find me on Twitter at Xenocreator125. Tim's here. You can find him on King Gamer, writing articles as usual. Thanks for joining us this week. Join us next week as we discuss The Chronicles of Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.